Hey, thank you so much for checking out today's video. I'm Pastor Matt, this is Pastor Adrian, and we pray this message blesses you and encourages you all throughout your week. Absolutely. For any more information on how to be praying with us or to become a part of our community or to give, please head on over to takeovergr.com. Man, I'm just me. Just. <laughs> Did you know C.S. Lewis actually went by the name of Jack? True story. Yeah, self, self-ascribed name when he was like six. He's like, nope, I want to be Jack. And then everybody, <laughs> yeah, sorry, Clive. <laughs> um, well, good morning, everybody. Um, so the Lord has been teaching me about comparison. Or actually, <clears throat> Lord, actually, it's more like he's been sitting me down about comparison. <laughs> Because that's, yeah, I know, <laughs> that's how it goes. But, so that's what I want to talk about this morning. Um, and I guess if this little snippet could be called something, it would be called the cancer of comparison. So they say comparison is the thief of joy. Um, why do people say this? Well, first, we need to consider what the joy of the Lord is. The joy of the Lord is more than happiness, like a lot of people ascribe it to. No, the joy of the Lord is a resolve that is rooted in the hope of Jesus, and it results in contentment and peace. The joy of the Lord is when you truly find soul satisfaction solely in Jesus being your portion. Now, in, in, in the daily, in your everyday, this looks like looking to Jesus to be your portion to be your satisfaction and your hope in all of the daily tasks that you find yourself doing um, and all of the fights and the thoughts that go on in your head. True joy is rooted in Christ. And if that's true, that it's rooted in Christ, then you can only know and have joy if you know and have Jesus. Comparison is the thief of joy, they say. Whoever they is. I, I don't know who they <laughs> they. they. You see, comparison, it takes your, your gaze off of Jesus and it distracts you from knowing him, from seeking him and seeing him. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and comparison is one of his most cunning and powerful weapons he has at his disposal. Comparison is a cancer to the soul because it's sneaky, it's sly, it starts without you knowing it, and it grows if it's not looked for. And in the end, it'll bring distortion, destruction, and spiritual death. Yeah. So we're going to look at an example of this. Um, and a portion of scripture that I keep coming back to is recently, over the past couple of months, is Luke 10, 38 through 42. So if you have your Bible, you go ahead and turn there. Um, this is Mary and Martha. So, starting at verse 38. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him as a guest. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he said. But Martha was distracted with all the preparations she had to make. So she came up to him and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work alone? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken away from her. So this, um, this is Mary, Mary Bethany, and her sister, uh, sister to Martha, um, and Lazarus is also their brother. Lazarus, the one that Jesus raised from the dead. So interesting family dynamic we get to peer into. Jesus says, Martha was getting distracted, right? Martha, Martha, you are distracted. You are worried and troubled about many things. But I believe beneath that distraction, she was giving into comparison, comparing what Mary was doing with what she was doing, right? And the funny thing about, about comparison is you take two things, two parties, two people, or two objects, and you, you evaluate them against one another, and you assign value 
to those two things, right? And so as she looks at her tasks and what she's doing, she sees that as valuable. And she looks at Mary and sees that what she's doing is not valuable, right? In short, Martha it was too busy looking at Mary instead of looking at Jesus, right? And I said um, earlier that comparison takes your gaze off of Jesus, and, and you see, you see this, <laughs> Martha still called Jesus Lord. She began with that, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work alone, right? And so comparison distorted how she viewed Jesus. She made a judgment about him and his character based on the compar- comparison of what she was doing and what Mar- Mar- uh, Mary was doing. Comparison will lead us to challenge and question Jesus. Do you really care? We start telling Jesus what to do too. That's what, that's what Martha did. <laughs> she follows up with, tell her to help me. <laughs> um, and instead of looking to Jesus and letting him and his character, his promises, and the hopes inform Martha of, of who she is and what she should be doing, she instead looked at her environment and the other people around her to inform her of who Jesus is and what he thinks and what he cares. And so comparison is this thing where it takes your gaze off of Jesus and you start looking at the people around you instead. You start looking at them and your environment and your circumstances around you and you start to allow that to inform not only who you are, but what's important to you, what you should be doing. And in effect, it informs who Jesus is, right? Comparison steals away the hope and assurance of the work of the cross, of who Jesus is, of his permanent victory, and and what he is offering you in life. And it takes that view and it turns it inwards and laterally to, to the people and to lesser things around us. And so my, 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 my challenge and my hope is for, for you to take a personal inventory today as, as, as you go along this week and just like look into where you're starting to draw conclusions based on things other than Jesus, of letting him be your first thought and your portion, the thing that sustains you and gives you like sustenance in, in, your, in your daily life. Um, it's, it's so sneaky and I found it to be so sly in wiggling its way into just how I look and perceive people because I'm not starting with Jesus and letting that inform who they are and who I am and what I'm doing. And when you start in that place, you're, you're in a place of um, starting with the, with, with the person of living waters and you're, you're flowing out of that place and bringing prosperity and life and goodness into the other places that you are going because you're starting with him. See how that works? So... That's my encouragement. Let's uh, let's go pray out. Awesome. Come on. Give it up for Pat.